we need to talk about your roof. And we here today are on a live roofing installation site. I'd like you to meet Luke Sakura. He is the owner and operator of The Arc Roofer. And we're actually on a real live yeah. working job. We are. This is a big house in the uh, part of Georgetown, Texas. And uh, we got a little bit of everything going on here. Still tearing off some of the roof. We're putting on some new shingles on another part of the roof. Uh, just right up here, they're drying it in with underlayment, which is a synthetic underlayment, uh, a waterproofing system. Uh, we've got all of our nets set up for protecting the house during construction so that we don't have to fix things on their house when we're done. So that's very important for the homeowner. We're going to break it all down for you, but I wanted to kind of show folks, if you've never had your roofing replaced, what an actual like live construction site looks like. We've got guys over here pulling a roof down. We've got guys up here installing a roof. Where does it all begin? Yeah, so this roof was uh, damaged during a hail event. So it had some uh, hail damage and, and enough of it to where the insurance would actually cover to replace the entire roof. So uh, we had the insurance out. They agreed that it needs to be replaced. We had a couple leaks on the inside as well. Um, so then the process began just educating the client on the right way to do a new roof and the options available. Um, and then we also educate them on uh, the different variables dealing with intern companies as well. That's kind of our specialty. Um, so just, you know, educating, making decisions, and then the orchestration just starts to happen. If you are a homeowner who has ever experienced nail damage, you know that can lead to actually leaks within the home. You start to see the discoloration and maybe a bedroom feeling, yeah. and then you know you're in for some issues. Yeah, that's, that's a good sign that you, <laughs> you probably had a leak for some time if, if you're seeing it on the inside of your house. So that's definitely a good sign to call a roofing company. When it comes to insurance, I know you guys are insurance experts. Do you, with our grouper, actually take a lot of that legwork, the thing in the network, dealing with the insurance company off of the homeowner's place? Yeah, that, that's definitely an overwhelming experience for some homeowners just because, uh, you know, if you get the insurance paperwork and once they approve everything, that can be 20 pages long, very overwhelming information. So we simplify it, we educate you, and we handle the insurance from the front all the way to the back, behind the scenes. You literally do not have to talk to your insurance company once we start uh, interacting with the relationship. This is definitely a, in the in the act. We're all roofing projects going on, so there's a lot of a lot of projects that you'll see in your neighborhood if you're getting roofs done that don't have some of the protection we do, like the wall nets, the, the tarps that are covering the driveway um, down the sides. You'll actually see landscape uh, commercial grade netting to catch anything. So this is just one of the things that sets us up um, that's different than a lot of other companies. Um, transparency is also really huge for the homeowner because while the homeowner is inside, if she wants to see what's going on, all she has to do is pull out her phone and click on a link that we sent her. And every couple hours, we are literally taking pictures of every step through the process and they get put on that link that the homeowner has access to in real time so they can supervise their job from their phone and they know that we did what we promised we would do as well. So it's very good reassurance for them and just adds complete transparency for their experience. We've talked about this a lot of time after a city, city or an area has sustained some hail damage, you'll get guys in the truck that maybe do have roofing experience, maybe do not. Right. How, and they, they seem, tend to kind of descend upon a neighborhood, perhaps, yeah. that they've heard. How do you, as a homeowner, decide who is reputable? Who are you trusting with probably the most expensive asset you'll ever purchase in yeah. your versus, you know, somebody who's just trying to capitalize and make a buck? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's a good point. Um, you know, I, as the owner, I have a vehicle that's fully wrapped, which a lot of the other companies, their sales guys don't have uh, that much advertisement on their vehicles, but they should have at least something, either a logo on their shirt or their hat or a magnet on their vehicle, something that tells them who they are when they're approaching somebody to start talking about their roof or anything else. Um, if a truck pulls up and they have no no badge or no um, verification of who they are, it's a good sign they're probably not from the area and they don't want to, they don't really want you to know who they are because they're one of those fly-by-night companies that are just trying to go out and get a bunch of work and then you never see them again. So that's big. Let's talk a little bit about your experience. Why did you get into this line of work? Um, yeah, so I, I grew up as a third generation uh, contractor and remodeler um, and painter. 
And so we actually do painting and gutters and roofs as well um, as just roofs um, alone. But getting into this industry is just something I grew up in. I've been around it my whole life. Um, I really love being outdoors, climbing on some of these awesome roofs with stellar views is just peace of mind and ultimate freedom for me. So I really enjoy it. And I think you really enjoy educating the homeowner on the experience. So when yeah. I was talking with Luke, um, there are so many options out there, right? From your shingle to your slate to your metal roofs to the um, Spanish tiles. Do you like to let homeowners know what the best fit for their particular home would be, even down to the aesthetics? Yeah. Like you've seen yeah. how the different color shingles may look based on the color of the home and what will make it look nice. Yeah, so, and I get that uh, specialty, that skill set just from painting houses for over 20 <laughs> years with my dad growing up pulling out the right colors from the stone or the rock and, and helping the homeowner learn how to tie that into the new roofing system. Uh, really just make your house look like a brand new beautiful house. So we talk about colors and we also talk about quality of shingles, how long they're going to be in the house, if they're wanting to buy or, or sell their house soon. You know, all of those decisions are, are important in um, choosing your roofing system. So ventilation is something also we talk about too. Choosing the right ventilation can mean a lower energy bill, uh, a longer lasting air conditioner, a longer lasting shingle. Um, and then also sometimes we get some solar credits for some solar fans that we use on the roof as well so they can save some more money that way. I love it. I know you, Luke alluded to some of this netting and I really just wanted to point out the netting and why the netting we're using here on this project is special. So no matter what, when you're in a construction site, you're going to see some of the debris. And folks, you can clearly see some of the debris that we're showing you here. Look, we've got guys actually that are taking off, quite literally as we speak, the old hail damage roof. Yeah. 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 And folks, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna try. There's a hole. There is a hole in this roof. <laughs> right behind sure. the gentleman who's working on removing the roof. Luke, if this roof hadn't have been replaced, that would have been major, major damage. Yeah, to the yeah, and she already had incurred some interior damages, so it was definitely a, a, an urgent matter to get that taken care of for her. So back to the netting. When you hire a roofing company, you want to make sure that because it's an active construction zone and the roof is coming off, when the roof goes to the ground, your shrubbery, your landscaping, it's protected. You said this is a commercial grade of netting and it's one of the things that sets you apart from the rest. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. So a lot of times when, especially if it was a little bit more windy today and you're throwing something off the roof and wind catches it, it can slam that shingle made of tar into the rock or the stone or the garage doors of the house and create a permanent tar mark that you can't get off. Um, sometimes you have to go and repaint the entire side of the house because of that. Um, or sometimes replace plants that get damaged. So it's, you know, living a preventative construction zone lifestyle is kind of what we're all about <laughs> yeah. um, to make sure that. And, and I'm afraid we're going to have be hit by a tile. So we're going to do a little <laughs> more walking and talking okay. because we also want to educate you here today on some of the different shingles and the quality types between the different options that are out there. This is what used to be right. on the house, right? So what are we dealing with here? Kind of a, a it feels a little cheap. It feels uh, brittle, to be quite honest. Right, yeah. So this roofing system was close to 15 to 17 years old. Um, it incurred some hail damage, you know, like this might have been one of the areas that got damaged. Um, you can actually see a little crease mark here that could indicate wind damage. Um, some other spots where you just see some, you know, like that right there looks like a, a hail hit where it impacted and bruised the matting of the shingle. So stuff like that is what's considered storm damage. And if there's enough of it on the entire roof, that would warrant a full roof replacement paid by the insurance company because that's what you pay insurance for on your home. Um, so, that being said. That's the old yep. in with the new. Yep. This is the roof that you are installing now. That is correct. This is a GAF Camelot series shingle. This is uh, considered a 50 year asphalt shingle, a luxury designer grade shingle. Um, so. What makes this luxury design designer grade work? The weight of it is much heavier than yeah. the other shingle. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> it's, it's a lot thicker, it has a lot more resistance to hail impact and resilience as well, so it's going to last a lot longer. And it's pretty too. It is. It's, it's kind of designed, once you put it all together, to look similar to a slate tile roof, which might be over $100,000 on this house, but for a fraction of the cost, you can get a luxury designer grade shingle. You 
kind of compete with those really, really, really expensive groups that are not made of asphalt. Anyway, so, uh, and they're, you're, they're you're here to help educate the homeowner on the best choice for them. Yes, correct. Yeah. How many workers do you typically have working a job site? Because um, we got a lot. Yeah, we do. We we probably have about 12 or 13 guys up on the roof right now. Um, this is about a 70 square roof, so it's a fairly large roofing system that we're installing. We'd like to give it get it done in a two-day period, so we do have a timeline that we're trying to get done by. Uh, but sometimes on a smaller house, we might only have six or seven guys on a roof and, and can get it done in even one day sometimes. So we do have enough staff to fulfill any, any project bigger small. I wanted to educate people finally on some kind of do's and don'ts. I have no knowledge of what it takes to take off or install a roof, but you were saying there's a certain bit of best practices that a roofer should use. Like you were describing, sometimes when they remove the old roof, maybe they don't really remove all of the old right, roof. Right. Talk to our viewers about what they want for the best roofing experience to see and to have their roofing company do for them. Yeah, so there's uh, not only a lot of different options on different components you can have, whether they're made of plastic or metal. Everything we put on the roof is made of metal. There's nothing plastic on our roofs, um, which is one thing. But the biggest thing to if you were to cut a corner in a quick way where the homeowner usually doesn't know is uh, they leave the old felt paper on the roof and they don't strip it all the way down to reveal all of the decking. The reason why that's important is one, it can void the manufacturer warranty if you do not remove all of the decking or all of the shingles and felt paper. Number two is I need to uh, see if there's any problematic areas on the roof like that big hole you saw. We might not have been able to see it if the old felt paper was on. So we replace any rotted wood we find, um, and then we also make sure the decking is good, you know, as far as having spacers in between each sheet of plywood to allow for expansion through the seasons. Okay. So there's multiple things we look for when we tear off a roofing system, and that's how we, we do it. And that, we start from scratch that way, and that's the best way to do it. Customer service has got to be paramount. So I know you guys do attic inspections, and you're actually not just looking on the outside of the home, you're looking on the inside of the home before you begin any project. And then after the project, there is a project manager assigned to actually communicate with the homeowner. Yes. Yeah, talk is, to me about that process for you. That is correct. So right before you guys got here today, we actually got in the attic and walked the entire attic. We looked for air conditioning, refrigerant lines um, running too close to the decking from the inside. We also looked for gas lines or water pipe lines that may be too close so that when a new nail goes through, we make sure that that doesn't hit and create a new problem. Uh, yeah. So a pre-attic inspection before construction is very important. And then when we're done, we also want to make sure that all the gas pipes are aligned properly back to the furnace and sealed properly on the roof so that there's no worry of leaking carbon monoxide in your attic. So if you're getting your roof done and the roofing company does not mention anything about attic inspections, that would be another really big red flag. That, that would be very hazardous to have a problem go on in your attic. And also just from the sense, once a job is completed, having that follow-up with the homeowner, showing them the footage, right. we have full transparency. So most of us are not going to get up and have a drone right. <laughs> to be able to take pictures yeah. from the roof down. They're actually providing that to yeah. the homeowner. Yeah. So we do, we do have a drone for uh, every sales guy on our team. Um, it's provided with one of those so that they can have that experience for the homeowner if they choose to have those photos or videos taken. But when we're done, we also have a, um, a second project manager come and do a walk around with the homeowner and create a punch list if there needs to be one. Um, before we call it done, we want to make sure the homeowner also would consider it done and they're 100% happy. So we've got two project managers for each job, one during construction and one after construction to walk around the homeowner and just make sure that they're 100% happy. I'm guessing you have a relationship with real estate professionals as well because a lot of times before a home is bought or sold, inspectors come in to check and see are there are people looking for your expertise to determine whether or not a current room will need to be replaced yeah. before a home is sold. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, a lot of realtors use home inspectors. Home inspectors know a little bit about a lot. So they, when they look at a roofing system, a lot of times they will put in their report a recommendation for a roofer to come and look at it just because they aren't quite sure but they might think that there might have a couple things on there that need to be looked at. We make real estate agents look very good in front of their clients because we give them free health reports of the whole entire roofing system. 
with probably close to 100 photos of every single inspection, and we're able to advise them on what we would recommend um, before that house gets sold. Property management companies is also something that we do a lot of work with as well, uh, helping them manage all of their properties. When there's a problem after a storm or when there's a problem in general, we're able to go and provide them with those um, health roofing reports and uh, let them know what's going on. Awesome. Before we say goodbye, I want you to just talk us through what's going on right here. <laughs> so this is uh, the old roofing system. The shingles are already taken off. This is the old organic tar paper that the builders put on. It kind of crumbles as it gets older and they are pulling all the nails out. The manufacturer requires us to put a new roofing system over a smooth, clean deck. Okay. So that means we've got to take off the old felt paper, which he's about to do after he pulls out all those nails. And then we can inspect the decking to make sure it looks good before we put on the new roofing system. Awesome. All right. Before a project, we come out over here real quick. I want to talk about what should homeowners inspect and finally after a project. What should they expect from their roofing project? So after a project is completed, um, after their walk around and everything else, we will actually um, communicate with the insurance for them. If it's an insurance job, let them know that it's completed. There may be a supplement involved in that, which means we ask more money for the from the insurance company. If we were to find two layers of felt paper under here, then that means there would be one additional layer that we did not account for. And so sometimes we can ask the insurance to accommodate any unforeseen things that happen during construction. Um, we handle all of that for the homeowner. And so I'd say after a full roofing job is complete, a couple weeks later, it's all closed out from the insurance. You get the final checks and then we can come and close out the claim and then we will register your warranties with the manufacturer at that time. Awesome, awesome. You do a 20, is there a 21 or 22 point checklist? Yeah, so a 22 point 22. inspection. That's actually what we do on every inspection before anything gets started. Um, and that's part of the free health reports that we give people. So they know a lot of information so that they know you know what they need to do next it, as you're peeling away the shingles or the the tar paper it's like you know peeling the layers of an onion there's so much to know and so we in this little bit of time wanted to just kind of share with you some of the expertise from Luke Sakura with our grouper if people had follow-up questions about their roof or maybe they have sustained some hail damage and want to get a hold of you what's the best way for them to contact you with? yeah you can go to arcroofer.com and that's a-r-k that's how you spell arc um, and then Noah, Noah's <laughs> Ark Rupert. Right, so we are definitely here to protect you guys from the storm um, in multiple ways. And you can go to our website, fill out a form, and just let us know what you need. We'll have somebody reach out to you within 24 hours, most of the time a lot sooner than that. And then we can discuss your needs and what we can do to help you. Awesome. So people can Google you, find you online, find you on Facebook, yep. give you a call. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps this could be the situation in your own home. Hopefully not. But, you know, <laughs> roofing is a necessary. If you've owned your home for more than, I don't know, 20, 30 years, yeah. you're going to be where we're standing here today. <laughs> yeah, but the homeowner is very, very excited. So she's going to have an amazing new roofing system and her whole entire house is going to look much different so she's really excited. All right so what we need to do is do like a follow-up. We have the before we're going to come back and yeah. show some follow-up. Yeah 100 percent yeah so we're excited. Thank you for yeah. sharing your expertise with us uneducated folks <laughs> <laughs> and sharing uh, sharing some information yeah, that you definitely. can use for people today. Definitely. All right folks we hope you have a great day. We hope you learned something today. Luke Sakura, the ARC Looper and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.